Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. Um, we're doing something a little bit different today. We're taking a break from the station build because as you know it's it's a long and tedious job and, it, and I think I've said this before it would be a, a long video and not only that it'll be like I'm repeating myself. So we got something a little bit different for you today. Um, an ex-signalman from South Shields. Um, we're going to be talking to him in just a second. And um, I'd just like to say a big welcome to John. John Kudahi. Hello, John. Can you tell us something about yourself, please? Well, I'm John Kudahi. I was a signalman at South Shields from 1962 till it closed in 1968. But prior to that, I worked, uh, I was a signalman that. Um, in 1947, when I joined the LNAR at the Newcastle number three, Newcastle number two, and Newcastle number one power boxes, and from there uh, I just I was in the, on the railway 40 years. I'd, I had five years in the army in between me time, and I had 40 years altogether on the railway. Right, <laughs> it sounds like you've been. Uh, been quite busy in your lifetime. Oh yeah, it was uh, just an ordinary life on the railway. I um, enjoyed Newcastle Station when I worked, worked in the power boxes and uh, I enjoyed the, the chat with the drivers and the old steam engines there was at that time. All the, we used to call them Pacifics. We didn't know anything about the, the technology of the steam engines. One was a Pacific the other one was uh, the old uh, pilot and whatnot. We should, and we had the North Brit engines coming off the um, Rickerton line between Rickerton Junction and Newcastle. And there, there were the Wandering Willie was one, and there was Hall of the Wind, and Meg's Metherley's there were the North British engines, and that's, I mostly remember them sort of engines, you know. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. Uh, so, could, could you tell us a little bit about your childhood and growing up in the North East? Did you always want to be uh, working on the railways? No, it was, a, it was just accidentally made me, because my dad wanted to work in the shipyards, and I worked in the shipyards when I first left school in 1945, and uh, the naval yard at work, and I was working as a rivet catcher, where they had to keep the rivet, to, and the week had to throw the register, the uh, river there, you know. I got sick of that, and uh, I didn't like it at all. So uh, I decided that I wanted to go to sea, and that didn't work. And I had a job on the ferry boat, the Midtown Ferry, uh, between Walker, Newcastle, and Heaven on the steam. And I used to work as a rope lad on there. And then as I, uh, later on, I, I was out to work, and I seen an advert for, for uh, signal lads or... or uh, of people to work on the railway, and I ended up actually as a cleaner at um, Gates of Depot, the Rope Depot, for a while, and it was too awkward for me to get from my home over the bridge to uh, Gates, at, you know, from Newcastle over the bridge. I had to walk over the the, uh, the bridge from Newcastle and the Gates, do you see, and uh, eventually I ended up in, as a signal lad in uh, Newcastle number three. So when you were uh, when you were working in in the Gateshead sheds, you, you must have saw lots of traffic coming in and out of there. Well, the engines were all scruffy, you see, and uh, I wasn't there long uh, because a, a cleaner there. Uh, yeah, there were uh, when I first went there, these lads just crawled inside the fireboxes for to chip the uh, clinker off the inside of the fireboxes, you know, and mm. to get through it. And one of them uh, took his lamp in and uh, they shut the firebox door behind them. I said, well, I'm not going to deal that. It's a lot of you see? So, and I was cleaning, you know, the, you, when you twisted the, 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 the door and you had to clean the smoke box out, and I was cleaning, they were shoveling the, the muck and dirt out of the floor, the smoke box. But I noticed that most of the engine ones were sort of run down at that time. They're very old and scruffy like. But I noticed there was a couple of brand new engines. Came to Gateshead in about 1948, 
and there were and I heard there were uh, cover corns or something, you know, and I didn't know at the time. But after that, I left the depot and I went over to the station and, and started in the signal box. Sometimes I regretted that because I might end up with a driver, you know, but uh, that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> Uh, All right, so so Gateshead was your first signal box. Well, it was Newcastle number three was the first signal box, but there was a signal box at the Gateshead end called King Edward Bridge. And if ever if you ever travel over the uh, the divide up there the, towards uh, you know from the west end of the station, now the King it's a King Edward divide, isn't it? They call it over uh, across there. Yeah, is that the one next to the uh, Metro Bridge now? No, no, this is the West End, the West End. Oh, the other, yes, 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 no, no, uh, no, about, you know, yeah, where, yeah. Where, 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 the, where the kids are look, watching the um, trains at the moment, on, I've got a photograph oh, of at the moment, oh, well, with the Diamond well, Crossing. Well, that actually is the East End, that's, a, that's ah. Newcastle number one. Ah, right. And that, that was the East End, and I used to work there as well, in that box as well. But the West End was Newcastle number three, where the trains leave, uh, number four, or whatever they call it now, to go over the, the, the bridge towards the south. You yeah. had the south lines, and yeah. you had the east lines, you see. The right. east lines used to go around uh, to the left, and the south lines swing around to the right on the main line, you see. Yeah. But there's a signal box in that in that cut, right between the, the, the joint of the two lines, and it was called King Edward Bridge uh, signal box. Uh, right, okay, all right. So the, the, the photograph that I've got up at the moment, I've got some train spotters on the castle looking down on the big diamond crossing. Is that a oh, signal? Uh, it looks like a signal box there, right across the, the castle, tracks. Uh, uh, it uh, straddles it, it straddles across. Right. It's called Newcastle Number One. That was, the, and that was the one that controlled the uh, the diamond crossings and uh, used to work the. He used to work to the Newcastle number two. The trains used to come in across there, and there's another box in the station called Newcastle number two. That's to deal with the platforms and that, you know. And then Newcastle number three was at the West End. And there's another one called Fourth Junction, towards uh, further over towards the west, where the Carlisle traffic used to go on uh, Britain Junction traffic. It's right? difficult to say, you will not understand, like, but I yeah. remember all this from that day. Yeah. So, were, were the levers quite heavy to pull? No, no, there were little tiny levers. There was power levers. It was all like um, air control. You know, was it um, pneumatic? All right, pneumatics, yeah. And there used yep. to be an air, comp there used to be a compressor. You could hear the compressor, and there was always a hissing noise around the station. You could hear all the and when the points turned, if you're in the signal box, mm -hmm. there was a st there was a the panel with small levers on. You see, tiny, tiny little levers, mm -hmm. and uh, you used to pull for the, the signals. You pulled them straight across, and the signals used to come off. But the points, of course, you had to pull them into the centre, and then you could hear the points, or you watch the points turn, and then pull the lever fully over. But if you were actually walking across from the station. Uh, which, which is a deadly place for to get from there, from the station to the box. You did, the trains was coming at you from all directions, and you could hear the the, the points clashing like bang, you know. Mm. And if you got your foot here or your fingers in there, it would take them off. They're terrible. Them pneumatic points, you know, you know a quarter there, crash at you. You could hear them crashing, you know. <laughs> so there's no footway to get to that signal box then? You had to cross the tracks, there's no like overhead gantry or anything like that to walk along? Oh, there's nothing there. From, well, at number one, the 4011 and now at the east end, that was called the east end of the station, mm -hmm. uh, you could get at number one by walking along and just crossing the platforms and you got in. If you look at it, you see there's platforms all yeah, the way along yeah, it. Yeah, I can and see you could that. just pop over there. The it's only thing there. you had to watch there was um, the live rail. Oh, right. So you're jumping down and the live rail was there, but it was protected by wood, wood slats come up the side. Yes. So if you did trip, you hit your foot on it, you wouldn't hit the rail. But there was parts of it that was bare, and then you had to step gently over that because it was a high rail, you know, something over that. And if you wore a heavy coat that it was raining, you would, and you caught your coat, the wet coat on there, bang, you, you got an awful clutter, you know. <laughs> but it never happened to me, of course. <laughs> 
Uh, it's just just fascinating. I just, I just I just love this. I can I can visualize. Not only am I looking at the photograph, I'm actually visualizing you walking across there, dodging those tracks. Uh, well, what, what we're doing? I used to I used to travel around. You do a boot. You used to be a boot lad, and it was in in the, each box except number two. There's just a single man there, but number one and three, there was uh, three single men. A telephone boy and a boot lad. Well, sometimes the tele I used to do with the telephones instead of the boot, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the, the telephone lad, I'd do the messages as well. And you have to take your own messages and go for the stores. And there was big tunnels under the station, you know. There was a big tunnel under the station where the stores were, and they're still there yet. It's fantastic oh, under yeah. that station. Aye, they is. Yeah. And and they give us a uni they give us a uniform made in about 1920. It was we used to call it dirty bark tweed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, where, where did you move on from from Newcastle? Where did you go from there? Well, I joined up. I joined the army in 1950. Right. I joined uh, an infantry regiment called the Royal Irish Fusiliers, uh, and I was in there till 1955. And I came out of the uh, the army, and uh, I know I thought of coming back on the railway again because I was working for a fellow called Marples Ridge. We we're building that, you know, that big dock at Shields, uh, Brigham's Dock. Right. We're building that, and I was working with a gang of Irish Irishmen there building the dock. And uh, of course, in them days, there was no no uh, uh, cement mixers coming around on wagons. You know, yeah, they mix the cement in a huge machine. And this little Irishman used to mix, make the mix, and I would throw it in. I was doing all the donkey work and mixing it, you know. And then he just used to throw it into the pans, and used to be a big uh, the, the shuttering on the side of it where they were building the dock and throw the concrete down there. But uh, that finished, you see, and I was out to work again, and I seen an advert for signal men wanted, you know. Well, I says, oh, I had to go, I'll have a go at that, so... I went to Newcastle and passed and had to pass the block, and then after that you had to try and find a job. And my first job was a place called Point Pleasant, on the riverside. You know the riverside. I've heard of the riverside line. I used to run from Newcastle to Percy Mayor. Oh yes, Percy Mayor. Yeah. And there yeah. was and there was 1938 type AMUs on that on that line. You see. Right, John, I've got a picture up of one of the EMUs you were talking about. Um, I'll just describe it to you. Um, it, it's in Newcastle Central, and it's got, um, it looks like two sets of sliding doors per carriage. It's flat, flat face that, at the front. That's right. I, um, that's a, can you tell me a bit more about them? Well, it was just that they were, uh, as far as I remember, they just, as you say, they're just there's two for, for carriage and there were sliding doors and of course you had to slide it naturally to get on. And once you were on, the, the doors on the locks on the doors you had to wear and as the train travelled along, we'd put his brakes on and put speed on, the door used to open it and you might have a full carriage. And you were frightened to shut the blink and try to shut the door in case you fell onto the truck, you know. <laughs> A terrible door, some of them, uh, and they weren't properly locked after, you know. But the, the seats, some were great seats, and they were lovely sets there, and the best sets of the lot. All They're right. better than them later ones that used to run the shoes, and they, all the single compartments. So, if the, the first job was, uh, where, whereabouts did you say your first job? I was, was? A point, I was a porter sig at Point Pleasant. Uh, that was the only job I could get, you see, because when you were first starting, you were bottom of the list for jobs, and it was hard to get work. They wanted signalmen, but they wanted signalmen to go into the wilds, like, you know, to yeah. live miles away. And if you tried to get a job in the towns or local, you couldn't get them, you see. The only good job I could get was Point Pleasant, and uh, I kept that. And I got a temporary job at a place called Sea Banks at Seam. It used to be like a run a lot of colliery traffic there, you know. Oh, I don't right, know if yeah. you've heard of the coastline that runs between Sunderland, you know, and uh, Hartlepool. There used to be a branch off there called Sea Banks, and I used to work with it down there. And then right. uh, after that, uh, I, I did get another permanent job at Hart Station, which was on the end of the uh, Wellfield Lane. It used to run from Sunderland 
and then the Royal Grange Junction, and then the main coast line used to run, run alongside this line I was on. It used to, used to call the Wellfield, and used to run past Ryup Station and go to the right, right over the bank through Merton and right down and uh, Hazelden, uh, Castle Eden, down through the Hart Station. It used to end at Cemetery Junction back onto the coast line again, you know. Well, that was Hart Station. There was the two sets of trucks to Hart Station. But I had to travel on my motorbike, and of course, again, I didn't, it was bad to get there when I got another temporary job again <laughs> at, uh, at a place called Newton Hall on the main line uh, mm. between Newcastle and on the main coast. And it was actually, it was uh, a junction uh, and it used to run under the, uh, the, the junction used to come down under the Leam side line from the main line, you see, and the Trains used to travel from South Shields right away through the Sunland and up there through to Durham and on to uh, Wellington and all the way through. It was a marvellous set of rail there. And there used to be a train run through there um, from Blackpool to South Shields and there was a tank, tank, a tank engine on it, a large tank engine used to pull a train from Blackpool to South Shields and it would turn around on the South Shields turntable uh, for to get back again, you know, I was going back to Blackpool and that, you know, whatever it was, just it was a regular service. Yeah. And that was my uh, time at Newton Hall. I was only there six months, a fascinating job, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I used to, I had a couple of jobs, uh, single line working jobs there, where you had a, where engineering work was on and you had to be piloting on a single line, you see, and they used to take possession of the line. And, the, and we had a pilot had a uh, run between two points, two signal boxes, you know, see, at Newton Hall and Durham, you see. Uh -huh. And I had to bring these big uh, globos through all the air ones and every passenger trains. I had to get on there and either send them through. If I had three to, come, three to go and one to come back, I had to send two through and go on the third one. It could be... Flying Scotchman, all these trains and uh, Bitton and all them, I got on there and go on there, jump off at the other end and come, jump onto the train to come through again to guide that one through the single line from the other side. And it could be the one of the uh, Sir Nigel Gresley, I remember that thing coming through and uh, uh, Dominion of South Africa and all them trains. <laughs> that was, uh, in the, in the, of course, it used to get them and uh, it was generally at night, but if you were at Durham and and you stopped at the single at Durham for the get on to the train to tell the driver to take them through the single lane, and the signal was just on the end of the Durham viaduct, you see. All oh, so, right. Yeah, you know you claim on an engine and it's even a lie a bit uh, towards you. Yes. And you had to climb up on the engine and pull yourself up and you look back and you could see the, the rail of the viaduct up and beyond there's a huge drop. So if you <laughs> slipped on there, you were way over the top, you'd hit the rail and away on the hell over the top, you see. Yeah. So I didn't like that one very much, especially at night. <laughs> <laughs> right, John, I have a picture in front of me of South Gosford Station. Um, you've got, uh, the way I'm looking at it, um, you've got a siding on your left and an up and down line with a green looks like a green emu like the, what you've been talking about with a yellow panel on the front um so th th this station was one of the stations you worked at i worked there south gosworth and uh from there it was only a temporary job again and i went right round the circular route i was working at timeworth north and mm -hmm. then uh, jasmine station and also uh I think it was another one. Where was it? No, Benton. I was at Benton as well for the temporary. And the permanent job was still hard station, you see. Oh, and that's the way, that's it must have, been, must have been a nightmare travelling around. So t well, tell us a bit more about your motorbike. Well, I'm interested about how you got around to all these um, different signal uh, boxes. Well, I had different, different motorbikes. Like, I, I, I had an M20 BSA and when I first started out with a single. And then I got me uh, 350, uh, 350 twin BSA, it was a new one that was good, I used to get most of my jobs on that. 
and uh, I, I used that most of the time on the North Tyneside branch and the work, and I worked all the way around this, and uh, anyway, I mean, the last job I had on the North Tyneside line was Jesmond, you see, and then I got a temporary job at High Shields, another temporary job, you see, and my permanent job was still at, at doing at Hart, you see, and I was working all these temporary jobs. So I got the High Shields, and I was there a couple of years at High Shields, and uh, but at South Shields there was a vacancy, uh, or they, they, used, they took my night shift up at South Shields, and me and me mate filled in for a couple of hours from 1961 or 62 it was. Mm. It's our shields. So you got a temporary job at High Shields. So I've got a picture up of High Shields, which I, I've never seen this before. You, you sent me this one, and uh, it's a fascinating um, oh, well, station. Well, that was the signal box you can see, but that um, that was closed at the time. But High Shields Yard used to stretch all the way down from there, right away down to where. Uh, the La Strada was, you know, uh, the South Shields, and there was, and of course, there's a Halfords and there's a BM, a BM and whatnot there, now, isn't there? Yeah. And and used to be high. There used to be a station there called uh, it was Market Station, and it was the oldest station that was ever built. It used to run off the Stanhope and Tyne, and it used to end up there. That was before South Shields Station, and it was still in existence when I was there. And it was later burned down. The council burned it down. And anyway, I worked there for a couple of years, and uh, I was uh, me and my mate had to go to South Shields because they took the, the night shift off, and we had to fill in then for the two hours, a couple of hours each day, you know, to help the regular single man there. And then after that, I was. Well, I got another, High Shields died, I lost that job, somebody came back, and I got another temporary job with Jarro. <laughs> <laughs> in all the time, I'm still, I still couldn't get a permanent job, my permanent job was still on, so I had a, a temporary job with Jarro. Uh, okay. you, uh, you must have worked 24-7, did you? <laughs> what, what? 24 hours a day, did you? All these temporary <laughs> jobs. <laughs> I, I knew that's all it was temporary, and uh, of course I had the bike. And of course, of course, I was uh, I was living in Shields when I was uh, let's see, or when I was working on the North Tyneside line. But I, I married a girl from Sunderland. I was living at Sunderland when I got the job at High Shields, you see. And then I had to go back to Jarrow, and I got a temporary job at Jarrow. And lo and behold, about a year or two after that, I hung on to Janet with nearly two years. I got a permanent job at South Shields, it popped up, because nobody wanted to start at half past four in the morning, you see. And of course, John got the job, nobody else wanted. <laughs> so I got it to South Shields. And uh, I was working, I had to start at half past four in the morning. I was travelling from Solon on my bike. And I had to be there for half, before half past uh, four. Because it was a South Shields parcels and used to deliver all the newspapers, I think, on the train then. And if I was late, the whole of South Shields got no parcels till I got there, you know. <laughs> so it, they used to call me the Castletown Flyer because I lived at Castletown, you know. Because <laughs> yeah, I was always flying to get there at half past four in the morning, does that one? But luckily, I, I, managed to, I managed to get there all the time, right, you know. <laughs> So, you were the Castletown Flyer, I, John, well, I've just put a picture up of your new signal box <laughs> at South Shields, and uh, uh, you, you just recently sent me this photograph, and I've never seen this photograph before. It's a good one, isn't it? It is a good one. So Tony you, Lambert's photograph. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful photograph. Nice sunny day, and virtually the whole, everything's intact. All right, you, you've lost the, the fascia and a little bit of the roof, but... Um, but yeah, oh, I... so you were on about the newspapers, you had to get there quick. Well, there used to be a steam parcels at half, for half past four in the morning, you had to be there half past four to take on, and the steam parcel take about half an hour to get from Peel if the shields. Well, I had to be there at half past four in the morning, otherwise my mate Jimmy Moore worked, it happened to be on at Peel at the time, most of the time I got, and um, 
I had to be there, and I opened. They had to open the cabin. That means you took the train on, and they had to come all the way through the branch to get into Shields. And all the post office workers were waiting there, and whatnot. And the parcel people were waiting there. The train coming in, and if I was late, so Shields didn't get any parcels on newspapers so till I got there. Like you know, so <laughs> I had to make sure I got there. And I was almost flying there to get the half past four in the morning, sleeping and belting <laughs> along on my motorbike to get there. And Jimmy used, to, he, Jimmy used to say, when I go up in the cabin, he oh, he has the castle to not fly out there and say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was his joke, the same on me. <laughs> but I was there, uh, so she was, it was a good job, like, and um, I was there actually from 19, I got the permanent job in 1964, but I worked there with the AMUs. I seen the uh, 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 end of the a AMUs, and that, you know, so it's so she was, and they brought the diesels in. Mm. And I was uh, there in 1967, 1968, I think it was, and when, mm. when it closed down. But it, it was pretty. All, when when I was there for the AM, AMUs, we had to put the, the electric trains into this. We had to switch the uh, the, the, tr the lines on, you know, the rails on, and there was circuit, like a little cabinet with circuit breakers in, and you had to uh, push them in, you see, with the heel of your hand. Mm -hmm. As long as it wasn't wet, you were lucky like you didn't get a shot. And you saw it in there, and you had to put one in for the uh, yard and the other one for the beer. Mm -hmm. You see? Put, and then they brought the electric parcels in, and he used to shunt them into there, and he knew he'd go in there. So he got two parcels. He got the steam parcel in the morning, electric parcels. And then when we left, uh, when they were doing away with the um, use, they just used to you have the steam parcels, you see, and the, the electric parcels, of course, couldn't come in. There's no other, no other train. So, and the only other thing that happened, except that the, the Sunderland train, we had Sunderland trains in 1965, and they had a, uh, elect, the, electric, the, the diesel service to Newcastle, and in 1965, Beecham decided to do away with the, a lot of lines, and he done away with the Sunderland service, and I run the last train out of South Shields, on a half past one night in 1965, and it, it just went away, and without, there wasn't a soul on it, half past at night. Oh, and, after that, and after that, it was just general traffic, not, nothing much happened until we got the Royal Train for South Shields, which was a surprise. Yeah. Well, they just had a new tunnel built called the Jarrett Tunnel, you know. They were, uh, uh, it was the uh, motor tunnel used to go through on the train. Oh, right, yeah. Come through on the train from uh, from where she was, from Newcastle, and she come into Jarrow, got off at Jarrow, and the empty train had to come to South Shields for the run round. So I run them into the up platform, and of course, I made a bit of a stir. All of, everybody's looking at past, and everybody's coming to look at the train. And I run the engine off towards the turntable. And I can't remember what sort of engine it was. It must have been a little a tank engine. It must have been to get on the turntable. But it was a green engine. It might have been a restored tank, you know. Mm -hmm. And then he run round and come back onto his train again. And, uh, uh, of course, the train went away. To, uh, and she collected the the, tra the uh, Queen of Jarrow again, went on to stop. And, and after that, there wasn't much happened. And they just closed the station down. And uh, I lost my job. And I was redundant again. So I was looking for another job, and the only job I could get was a uh, horse attendant at Fourth Yard. I said, well, I'm not taking that, so I was going to go on the buses. I was going to get, try and get a job on the Shields buses. That's what I got, the Sunderland buses. And my mate again, Jimmy Moore, a good mate, Ted Peeler, he says, he's a union man, he says, I'll get you a job. And he got a temp another temporary job <laughs> in Durham South. <laughs> I was in Durham South. Get you back at Durham again, but there was no steam was then, you know. There were all Dentics running there, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I did see the Flying Scott come through, through because there was a, like a centenary run from yeah. London all the way to Edinburgh, and I seen that one both ways. I was happened to be there both ways, and I came through. Yeah. You know? I've got. I've got. You sent. You sent me a picture of the Flying Scotsman. Um, uh, just, just let me get it up on, on the screen. Uh, here it is. It's a. Uh, it's a tyne dog. Uh, that was a special, that went, that way. I wasn't there in that area there, and that was the uh, 1970, I'd be at Washington then, like I worked at Washington and all. Anyway, uh, I seen him come back as well, eh? uh, he come back, like, uh, he come back, 
uh, at Durham as well, and he come back, I think it was empty, he come back anyway. But I remember him coming back. But he hadn't got to stop that train, you know. And there was, uh, I was what, uh, I nearly stopped him because uh, I don't know, something happened to the signal, and there was two signal boxes, Durham South and Durham North, you see. Mm. And the bloke there, he, he couldn't, something wrong with the signal. I said, oh, well, I said, I'll, uh, luckily I got him a weird time and he he got the signal put right and it was there uh, because there's people standing by you know they were looking after me and sure they didn't stop the train I don't know if you've heard of that special hey, you've run all the way see it was a centenary of the uh, first run of the flying scotchman some right through to Edinburgh or something and they, they put it they put it on again in about 1968 I think it was hmm yeah, judging uh, by the cars, uh, the, the cars have got an old um, Vauxhall Corsair or something there, really old car and, and a Morris van, I think. So it, oh, it could have been uh, uh, the uh, 60s. Uh, that would be nice. There were 60s cars. That's a Cortina, that you see there. That's a Cortina. Ah, that's right, a yeah. Cortina. I yeah, had yeah, one yeah. of them. I, got, I eventually forwarded a car, had an old Cortina. I battered one at the finish like I used to use. Anywhere there, <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, didn't make much money. Really, so you, so know. you got rid of the bike for a, for a Cortina? Well, I still kept my motorbikes. Oh, no, I had an old butter I had a family, you see, and I had a, have a car for the family. So I, managed, I, had still, I still had my motorbikes. I kept my motorbikes from when I was 14 years old till I just sold the one about two years ago. <laughs> and I, and I, I was an Italian born to live I said, it finished late. But I had motorbikes on your life, and I had cars till about eight years ago, I uh, packed and driving, like, I didn't like driving cars on these roads now, but I was out uh, eating with a motorbike for them all. Mm. So that was, uh, so we uh, walked down now, we're into uh, the end of South Shields, aren't we? Yeah, you've, you've just been made redundant, and your mate, I went, I went to Dur oh, that's right, Durham South, and I was, uh, oh, that's right, it was Durham South, and I had the, uh, that job for it, till it, th that job closed, uh, in 1969, but I said I run. It was a good, good job, but the Delta used to run there, you know, through there. There are lovely trains there, and them Delta engines, you know. Yeah. So anyway, in 1969, uh, I got a permanent job. I don't know how I got it because I. You oh, sure it's a permanent maybe, job this time? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I've, I've, I've run past myself there when I was at South Shields. It was a job nobody else wanted. And I used to start at half past four in the morning. Yeah. But they used to take marks of signal boxes for upgrading at one time, you know. All right, yeah. And then for some reason, the, the back date of the marks for the signal boxes in the area, there was some South Shields as a class one, you see. Mm -hmm. So they up the date of the, the special class from 1932 marks. It's ridiculous. I'll, I'll send you a note that shows you the. The station master said in this note where it'll be upgraded. Oh, and my right. me, me, me wage went up to about, uh, about 116 shillings. <laughs> <laughs> See? Uh, we, it's, it's on the note. I'll send you the note eventually. Oh, so right. everybody, was, everybody was going mad there because I, I, me, I, would, I made nothing. And as a junior man, it had been upgraded of a special class, and half the lads were, were seeing it to me. I was higher than them, that you see, because I upgraded it. <laughs> But I only got the job that nobody else wanted for the hot bars for a start. And that's how I got Durham South. That was it. I got Durham South on a temporary uh, special class, it was a special job, job as well, you see. Now, when they closed, uh, eventually closed uh, Durham South, there was a clock in there. It used to uh, gauge the trains or the viaduct uh, for speed. It was like a speed, an ordinary clock. And All right, it was like a speedometer. On All right. And it's in the York Museum now. Ah. Well, uh, the station master come along and says, whatever you do, he says, don't let the SMT, that's a signal, to get that clock, he says, they claim it's theirs. He says, it's ours and it's got to go on the York Museum. So the, the uh, fellow come up like, yeah. Uh, Inspector, he said, I'm taking the clock. I says, yeah, no, it's mine. He said, no, it's mine. I says, well, I'll fight you for it. He said, no, I says, you can have it. So anyway, I was really kidding him, like. And uh, anyway, I gave the um, the clock to the station master, and it's actually in York Museum now. Oh, I've seen wow. it. I've been and seen it, you know. Oh, wow. 
And the, I pulled us in the Durham South. I pulled the, the the board off the side for the uh, the U.S. Museum as well. And anyway, um, and after that, I'd actually got a permanent job at Tyne Yard Power Box. You ever heard of that? Mm. Big Marshall Yard called Tyne Yard. No. There's no. a big power box. No, I can send you photographs. I've got photographs of that. It's a big power box. And there was a part where they had these uh, run the wagons back, and there was like retarders. They used to retard the wagons, at, um, you oh, know, for yeah, shooting the wagons. To, and, yeah, you know. Divide them into lanes, if it were into lines. That was it. it that. Of course, oh, we, right. contro we, mm. we controlled the main lane right from Gateshead to mm. Ferry Hill, mm. you see. Mm. And I was, I, was a I was actually a relief man at Tyne, yeah, and I worked at Tyne Yard and Ferry Hill. I used to go to Ferry Hill, Tyne Yard. And sometimes Darlington, I got into there, uh, learned, I learned Darlington, I never worked it. And uh, I was working Percy Main, uh, North, and uh, I was round Heaton, all the way around. There were signal boxes that were left, I don't know who whole lot, you know. <laughs> and I worked on that from 1976 until, oh, I got onto the main uh, computer box at the thing called the Tyneside IEC, a big computer place. But there again, I'm, I'm, I'm shot, I've overshot myself again because when I left, when when the bo when the box closed at Durham South, I got another that had to go to Washington. That was it. I was at Washington, and I was a Dundon special class. And I was put on the Washington Relief on the Leem side. That was it. I overshot myself there. Mm -hmm. And I worked at, uh, I ever heard of um, Wardley? Uh, Washington, Sta Washington Station, Washington Chemical Works, I've all the way been... around there, you know. All yeah, right, yeah. yeah and, uh, and it was after that, I, w I, uh, I was uh, being redundant again because it actually closed the, the, uh, some of the boxes on there. And uh, I got a, the, the job at Tiny Yard after that. That was it. I always shot myself. I, I went <laughs> that many different places. I used to work up the concert branch as well, South Peel, right away up the concert steel works all the way around when I was on the Washington line and I'd done all around there uh, and Ferry Hill, everything. Any, uh, and Pensha, you ever heard of Pensha North? Yeah, I've heard of Pensha. Well, well I've, I've heard of Pensha Monument. Ah, well, it's Pensha North. There used to be a, a big uh, uh, station, Pancha Station and mm. Cox Green Station. I used to work all the temporary jobs. Are, temporary jobs are all over the place. I did. I'm not kidding you. There's that much. I forgot half the places that were that. <laughs> to tell you the truth. John, this has been brilliant. Chalk, listening, <laughs> listening to you and and all yeah. these stories, all the different places uh, that you've uh, been, and uh, I've enjoyed the interview. I've enjoyed talking to you. And uh, oh, well, yeah, would would you like to come back again? Well, I haven't. As I say, if I had a script in front of us, I could. Have, if I had a map of all the places in line where I'd been, I would have um, shot myself so much. But <laughs> because there's that many signal boxes I worked in, up the concert branch especially. Up there, and they used to be, oh, that was it. There was a pond of crossing as well. You ever mm. heard of that? No, no. Pond of crossing. One. The yard trains used to come from Tyne Yard, from um, Tyne Dog Bottom. You know the big 9Fs? You see them big Yes, nine yes, in the big 9F with the iron ore from, trains. From Tyne, yeah. from, from Tyne Dog Shed, and they used to come from there, and they jumped past Bank Top Signal Box, and the next signal box was Green Lane. Big power box with little levers in it that was yeah. in there as well. I learned it anyway, I didn't work yeah. it. And the next box was called Pont Up Crossing. And it used to, the, uh, start, the, the, the concert line used to run across there, and the coast line used to run, and an X, just like an X, you know, run across each other. And uh, it should run up there to, uh, all the way at the concert. And mm. To, uh, oh, is that money? He's to gone up there, and I worked up there as well. And I worked the uh, the chemical works at Washington and Washington Station. That was another signal box I worked in. When the, the all the war trains used to come past there, and they had the Leem side coming past as well. Yeah. Is that many places? You know, sure, fascinating. <laughs> John, I think we're going to have to leave it there, and uh, we'll have to talk again, mate. It's just um, hopefully we'll. we'll We'll get our heads together and we'll we'll get better organised and well, I organised uh, where I was, you know. <laughs> and I, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks again for for the interview. And uh, you're welcome, John. And uh, you're welcome. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more. But okay. Right, Tony. Thank you very much, and uh, you've been you've been great. Thank you very much.